G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Before we begin today's video, I'd first of all like to thank everyone for using the affiliate link when buying something through these War Thunder uh, anniversary discounts. They have basically accrued to a fair amount of money, and I now have the ability to make some upgrades that are quite significant. So I have either two options. I can either upgrade the visual quality by increasing the resolution to 4K 60Hz, uh, I will try and get a 4K 144 panel later down the line, and the main reason why I choose 4K is just because of YouTube's compression. When YouTube compresses things down, it starts to lose a little bit of quality, so whilst you may not watch at 4K, the 1080p footage might look a lot better, the 720p footage will look a lot better, etc, etc. So for those of you that might be interested in that, do let me know in the comment section below. The other one is audio. I could potentially scrimp some more money together and uh, buy an SM7B uh, and a nice big boom arm for it. My current mic does okay, but I really like the SM7B and its properties. So if you guys want to see that, let me know in the comments section below because at the end of the day, this money is intended to go back into the channel and, you know, it also gives me some goodies to play with if, if that's what you uh, sort of see it as. Either way, this goodie today that we have here is the LA200. This is a plane that I just could not love for the longest time. It was just absolutely hideous to play. I just could not get used to it. The guns were awkward. The plane itself was awkward. The performance I felt to be lackluster. And then I unlocked some upgrades. So it did tend to get better. And that's kind of the way the LA200 has sort of fallen with me. It's just become a really enjoyable plane. Not only that, but you do have yourself a lot more down tearing. The LA200 doesn't exactly do too well in an 8.7, and whilst you do tend to see 8.7s, you can deal with them okay. Like, it's not the end of the world, and you can sort of uh, make 1v1s, and you can get away with being a uh, little bit more disciplined, but it works. And this match is kind of going to show what I would recommend that you do with the LA200. In a down tier, however, that is a completely different story. The uh, down tier capability of this plane is insane. It is so damn fast that you can pretty much beat everything except for a few planes at sea level. And wow, it really does go fast, and the speed really makes this plane. The radar I would consider to be but fuck useless. It is just not worth talking about. It's a tracking radar. It's uh, fairly inaccurate, well, not inaccurate, but it's not very sensitive. Uh, and I've found that it to be, your Mark 1 eyeball is going to be a lot better. Let's just say that. So with that said, the LA200 is a bomber hunter. I believe it was designed to be a bomber hunter. Um, but that B-57 can go and suck a fat one out in the distance there. And I'm going to go and engage some fighters because uh, fighters are a little bit more interesting. And I can always outturn something like a, uh, maybe a big fat slow saber or an F-84F, or hell, an A5, uh, A4E that's sitting there in the distance. But the G91 is a little bit low and uh, closing the distance towards me. So I think I might go and see what that guy's all about. And it looks like he's not really paying attention to me, but he is just a little bit too low for me to really get some good shots on. So I decide not to, only having 150 rounds. That being said, 50 rounds a gun, and it's N37D, so... You do have plenty of ammunition, but I wouldn't be spraying it in this plane. I would be sort of really using your ammunition wisely because you don't really have that many opportunities to just frivolously spray. Um, and you'll kind of see that in the video here. So looking here at some uh, opponents, some, some juicy opponents and getting a little bit of uh, internet problems as you do down here in Australia, um, we are going to move on and two enemies pop up pretty damn close, giving me very little time to prepare, but that's fine. I'm going to go for a quick head on with the F-25 there and wow, N37Ds making their mark. And I believe these are just the stock belts. So very, very impressive work there by the N37Ds and, uh, moving on to the A4E here, which is our next opponent. And of course, being the highest in altitude is going to be the biggest threat. It doesn't really matter that the A4E is a bit of a shit dogfighter. If he gets on your tail, you are basically going to face 20 mil Colts and potentially aim 9s. So I'm not really feeling that and going to go for the A4E instead. Here we go. And uh, lining up our shots, it's not really going to work out quite well because I haven't quite got the lead. And the A4E turns out of the way just in time, but 
keeping up this turn fight is not really good for the A4E, despite what you might be thinking. It's um, going to end quite poorly. As long as I can keep my turns nice and sharp, the A4E is practically done for. I'm not really sure what it is, but this plane just does not have that capability to dogfight. He's, he's twisting and turning, and he's doing all sorts of maneuvers, and I've overshot here, but I've set myself up in a way that I can just go vertical, and the A4E can't really follow. Now, the F84F does help quite a lot, and popping a little bit of flaps, going down, back again, the A4E is practically toast. And you can see me here, I will spray a little bit. I can't quite land my shots. Uh, and you can see that the A4E is just staying out of gun range. But after a few shots there, the wing comes off and that is going to be GG for the A4E with kill number two. So again, moving on to our next target, it looks like the F89B there is going to be the juicy one because that's practically the only enemy I can really see. So the F89B coming in nice and hot, it looks like he's really quick and looks like he's got a lot of energy. And remember, having the afterburners gives that plane a lot more high altitude performance than uh, I would otherwise have. Two engines is uh, quite nice, and so is dealing with a 20 mil like that. Have to say, a little bit of RNG always does go a long way, but that being said, the F89B is still in a lot of trouble. An F84F and a MiG-15 trailing in hot, and of course me and the LA-200 coming in quite quickly. What the F89B probably should have done is maybe tried to separate us all out into threes by uh, getting a little bit more altitude, maybe getting a little bit more speed, and uh, trying not to turn fight as much. But that needless to be uh, said, the F-89B is doing the other wise thing, which is heading back towards his teammates. Now, none of us know this because none of us have him spotted, but uh, there is an F-86A5, I believe, heading straight towards me. There he is. And uh, there will be another plane to join quite soon, and maybe a fourth as well. This is where it is starting to get really, really hairy. And like I said, this is where the up tiers really start to hurt you. Now, the F89B is an 7.7, uh, .7, and the F86A5 is an 8.3, but the 8.7s are where the hurt is starting to really get laid on. And then when it comes to a multi-engagement situation, where you have more than one or two enemies to deal with, the LE200 starts to really lag behind, especially considering that your teammates in this case would be the F84F, and which is... Uh, Needless to say, a pile of shit sometimes, and you've also got the MiG-15, and the MiG-15 by no means is a bad plane, but when you do get into those engagements where you need uh, multiple players, the uh, MiG-15 is sort of not one of those where you want someone uh, to be around you. You'd much prefer something that is a little bit more run-of-the-mill, a little bit more consistent, if you will, something like a Sabre. Uh, these are, for some reason, just the planes that do better in a wolf pack. Either way, we have a uh, situation here where the F-89B is actually pulling away, and that's probably due to the afterburning performance as well as the acceleration of the F-89B, and the F-84F and F-86A have now come in to join the fight, and uh, I think it's just us two, MiG-15 and F-84, uh, and, and LA-100 against the F-84F, F-86A and F-89B. This is pretty bad, because at this point I need to make a kill here really quickly, and I've chosen the F-84F simply because he is the easiest target, and yet I managed to spray so many shells, waste so much ammo, and then have the F-86 sit behind me like this. This was my critical mistake. And on top of that, we have another F-89B starting to join the fray, and the MiG-15 is now going to be tied up by someone else. This is really, really not looking good for us. I managed to barely dodge the F-86, uh, F the F-84 looks like he's coming in hot, and I have an F-89 right behind me. This IL-28 is also looking pretty fresh here, so it's pretty much all over at this point. F-84, uh, F-86 is starting to get some hits, and it's starting to look really, really grim. My wings just basically come off, and that's pretty much it for me. Once that wing is damaged like that, I am practically out of the fight, and the MiG-15 will soon follow suit. But of course, I see an opportunity here, which is the IL-28. I have a few shells and a dream. I need one click to get this. Boom, up he goes in flames, and then so do I. So uh, maybe a small victory to take away, but uh, either way, it's not a result that I wanted to see. So uh, jumping into another game here, we have a full down tier. Now, this is a down tier where we do have a fair few premiums in the mix, but I'll tell you what these planes are nothing to sort of smirk at. The uh, 
SK-60, the A2D, F2H, these are all fairly capable planes, and of course the A2D being the premium here. Uh, that being said, look what I'm spotting here. I've spotted a little dot, and he's on the radar for once. This plane was a bomber hunter, so I'm going to use it as a bomber hunter. That's correct, we have spotted ourselves a big fat juicy bomber, and with three M37Ds we can dispatch this plane quite easily. So, I'm making my way downtown, and seeing this F-84 slowly close the distance is getting me a little bit worried, but I am confident that I might be able to either dogfight him at these higher altitudes with uh, what I believe to be better engine power, not entirely sure, but you know what? It's worth taking the gamble here. I'm confident in my abilities, and of course, confident in my abilities of the N N37Ds to make quite short work of this B-29. I kind of feel bad, because that's a lot of repair costs down the drain, and if you'd like to see some B-29 content, um, or hell, any bomber content, let me know in the comments section below, of course, with my, uh, with my upgrade advice, if that's what you would like to do. Now, the SK-60, as you can see at the bottom, is probably the biggest threat, aside from the Meteor. One, because he's from Nigel Squadron, and uh, whilst Nigel Squadron is, is they're my buddies, um, you're my viewers. So I would assume that you would take a little bit of uh, advice from me, and therefore not be complete ass at flying. And uh, you know what, that'll turn out to be fairly correct, as we'll see a little bit later on. Uh, the second biggest threat here is probably the Vampire, and then the F-84s. Now, I don't really fear the F-84s as such, because I can sort of run away from them, but if I am forced to turn fight, then the Meteors and the uh, and the A-2Ds will make short work of me. Now, I have singled out this A-2D because he is traveling away from me, and therefore that might give me the best shot. I do spray a little bit and make zero hits, which is, you know, just perfect, because now my teammates have died, and uh, that's partially due to me not being available on the battlefield. It's very upsetting, but now that means I have the opportunity to carry the game. Now, the A2D1 is quite looking fresh, but I think I have some better targets on my hands now. The A2D, if I was to go down for him, uh, I'd probably be finished by that Vampire, or by some F84s that have picked up some speed or altitude. Now, the Vampire is looking pretty, pretty sick as a target, but... I think I'm going to go for maybe an F-84 down there. Maybe Mr. Joe Dem Toes with the Meteor there. Go for a quick head-on. Nothing because he's smart and he's pulled away. You can even see he's gone for the re-engage, which is a uh, fairly smart move considering that I decided to disengage. Now, if I was going for the re-engage as well, uh, it wouldn't, wouldn't be a very smart maneuver because then we would both just end up doing what you would otherwise do in a full commit. So... We've looped over and have a look at the altitude that I've gotten over these enemies. These are fairly capable jets, F-84G, vampires, meteors, and yet I have pulled so damn high over my enemies that they are no longer a threat to me. And this is why I believe the LA-200 is so strong. Just that sheer gap in performance is absolutely mind-boggling. So much so that I am coming in at my max speed against this F-84. Spraying a little bit, but he is very, very much dead. Our next target here is the other F-84B, and this F-84B is losing speed, or sorry, the distance is closing quite rapidly. So we have another opportunity here to absolutely smash face, and that's exactly what we're going to do. The F-84B, whilst it's, to be honest, not a great jet, uh, you can still do things in, but you have to be very, very disciplined. Uh, and if you're against an LA-200, you can kind of kiss your ass goodbye, especially if you're carrying ordnance. Now, in this case, I don't actually know if he's carrying ordnance, uh, but I'm going to take a couple of little shots here. I'm going to see and test the waters, see how this guy is going to react. And it looks like he's going to go for a little bit of a roll. And so is, he is losing speed. I'm storing my energy and re-engaging later on because I know I'll have the speed, I know I have the energy to dive on this F-84 and uh, have a look at the gap that I'm starting to close again. This is really, really strong. The uh, LA-200 is just one of those planes that I just did not realize could do things like this at the battle rating that they are at. This thing is nothing short of incredible and I don't even have this thing spaded. I think it's like half stock. So or half spaded. So I, I have the belts now after this match. I have a couple of other things like the compressor and the 
the uh, boosters, a couple of other things. But this is like not fully upgraded. We have we have more to upgrade on this plane in order to get it to maximum overdrive. And so this is a really, really telling show about how good the LA200's performance can be once you give it a second chance. And I think giving it a second chance is the, is the sort of theme that we're going with for this week's uploads. We've got the LA174 giving it a second chance. Now giving this thing a second chance, maybe, maybe there's something you want me to give a second chance. Maybe it's the F2H Banshee. Maybe it's uh, something that you guys are struggling with a little bit. Maybe it's the F84B. Let's uh, have a discussion in the comments. Now, the F84B, once I have uh, damaged him like this, it's pretty much game over. I don't really see you getting out of that. Well, miracles do happen. Oh, never mind. Miracles don't happen because F84Bs are not fun to fly anymore. Either way, that is a little showing there of the LA200, but uh, all good things don't really have to end because the LA200 is back for business. This is on the same ammo load. This is only about five minutes in uh, from where we left off and I've spotted a little dot in the distance. Lo and behold, it will be the Meteor Mark III. It'll be the Nigel Boy. And now I know I've got myself a decent dogfight on my hands. It's just how we use our planes. And the LA200 is thankfully equipped with more energy than you can poke a stick at. So have a look at the head on here, pulling off at about 1.5. And of course, no dice there. And he goes straight for the re-engage. But have a look at the energy I am pulling and the distance that I am making on that Meteor. Now he is so slow that I have basically everything that I want provided that I can fit in that little bit of space. And because the Meteor is nice and slow, it is a very, very easy target. So... Boom, there goes the wing. Four kills. This plane is insane once you are able to keep your speed. And for me, this is a this is a sign of a very, very good plane. Now, less than five minutes after this, we are taking off again with a fresh load of ammo and a fresh load of fuel. We're still heavy from that fuel. And of course, being an LA200 and an SK60 is quite rapidly diving on us. We're at about 760 kilometers an hour and this guy is making a lot of distance on us, but the LA200 tops out at 1082 or 1086 or whatever the hell you want it to be, it's faster than the SK60. And so all you need to do is be faster and just let it rip, open the throttle, and the SK60 will be left in the dust. And that's exactly what I've done here. This is probably one of the oldest techniques in the book to uh, get rid of something that is not so great with the energy retention. Now, the vampire came out unspotted. I didn't see it, but I got lucky. But have a look at the SK-60. Look at the distance I am making on the SK-60 here. I'm going in a straight line, picking up speed, waiting for the SK-60 to bleed at speed, and then going up into the vertical, converting that speed into altitude, leaving the SK-60 in a full energy trap. And this, this is the way dogfights are meant to be. This is the way that I've always loved playing War Thunder. And have a look at how slow the SK-60 is now, being so damn low in energy, so damn low in speed. And even with my little blunder here, I managed to still stick on the SK-60. Have a look at that easy ace. That could not have been easier. This plane is an absolute monster. If you're in a full up tier, maybe stick with a mate. Maybe stick on the periphery, go for your 1v1s. In a full down tier, absolutely go nuts. Use your speed, use your altitude, use your energy. This thing is a monster. Just remember to learn to aim the guns. Once you aim those guns, you will basically ex exceed at everything. Now, fast forward a little bit more and the vampire who has run out of ammo has gone back to base. There's about three minutes left on the clock and uh, that's pretty much game. LA200, it's one of those planes that you just have to give it a try, learn the ropes a little bit, take the time, have the patience, and you know what? It will come to you. One of these planes, LA200, LA174, and whatever you want me to fly next, they're going to be good. You just have to give them the time. And I'm sure that's the case with most planes, but especially so something that is this powerful in terms of its engine and flight performance. Man, I regret knocking on the LA200 as a fat whale. And whilst it is a fat whale, 
get yourself some upgrades and you will absolutely enjoy this plane. Learn it and you'll have a blast. Otherwise, there's not much joy in War Thunder. If you're not learning things, I don't know. I feel like I need to be learning things. I feel like I need to be discovering or rediscovering things. And the LA-200 sort of brings back that old school jet feeling. That before missile type jet feeling. And to me, that's quite special and it's quite nice. But ladies and gentlemen, if you are about to unlock this plane, you're not missing out on anything. In fact, you are gaining quite a lot. So ladies and gentlemen, that's all for today. Let me know what you think about uh, a jet that I should maybe take out. Let me know about a plane that maybe isn't as loved as you might think. And of course, let me know what you think about potential tech upgrades. But until then, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for using the affiliate link. Thank you for all your support in general. Take care, and I'll catch you next time.